Aloha and good morning, Ohana. I hope you guys are having a beautiful and blessed day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we pray and ask and welcome you, Lord, to lead us and guide us to into the truth in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, Ohana. I hope you guys are having a beautiful and blessed day in Jesus' name. <sighs> Yesterday when I was outside, I went to go play water because it was like super hot. So I was looking up at the sky and the Lord showed me a compass, okay? He showed me a compass. And that's pretty much all that stuck out. I wasn't looking for anything. I just really enjoyed looking up at the clouds and I cannot help but think of the Lord and His ways and His love and His peace and His joy. And you know, and whenever God will show us something, the thing is that if our heart is open to Him, you know, we're not going to miss Him. If we're seeking Him, we're not going to miss it. We just got to put our trust in Him and don't like try and force yourself to, to get something that you just simply don't understand. That's why we can pray, you know. We can humbly come before our Heavenly Father. We can pray and ask Him for discernment. Ask Him for understanding. Ask Him to lead us and guide us. And that's what the Word of God is for. It is a lamp to our feet to lead us and guide us to and through truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. So when He showed me this compass. Last night I went and, um, you know, went digging. You know, I went go and dig and seek and ask and pray. Um, I was led to Mark chapter 1 verse 1 okay led to chapter 1 verse 1 in mark and here it goes it reads the beginning of the gospel of jesus christ the son of god verse 2 as it is written in the prophets behold i send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare the way prepare thy way before thee verse 3 it reads, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Verse 4, it reads, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Verse 5, it reads, And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Verse 6, it reads, And John was clothed with camel's hair, and with a griddle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. Verse 7, it reads, And preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Verse 8, it reads, I indeed have baptized you with water, but the but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Verse 9 it reads, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. Verse 10 it reads, And straightway coming up out of the water he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descended upon him. Verse 11 it reads, And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12 it reads, And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he, Verse 13 it reads, And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Verse 14 it reads, And now after that John was put in prison, and Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Verse 15, And saying, It is written, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Okay. And in verse 16 it reads, Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw us. Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Verse 17, it reads, And Jesus said unto them, It is written, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Okay. So when the Lord has showed me this compass, okay, here in Mark, is talking about 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. He like literally is pointing you directly to the true north. Okay, and the true north that is Jesus Christ because it's only through him, right? Okay, it is his blood that brings us nigh unto our heavenly father. We must go through Jesus Christ. It must be him the one who's speaking on our behalf. It is he is the one who died on the cross for our sins. And not only has he died, but he has he has risen. Amen. We serve a living God and Christ Jesus lives within you. His love is what radiates within you. And that is the very love that continues to pour upon you and your family. And it is by grace, amen, your faith in Christ Jesus. And it is by God's grace, his love in action in your life each and every single day in Jesus' name. I hope you guys can hear me fine. Okay? So there's a few things I wanted to point out, like, to talk about. Because, like, I noticed with, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys, too, if you watch my channel, I'm pretty sure you guys can appreciate, you know what I mean, when someone, like, notices something that you thought, oh, okay, only, I feel like I'm the only one can see this, or what have you. But do know that the Lord is working through all of us. And one of my brothers had made it very loud and clear the other day that, you know, the Lord, he nudges us and he shows us that we're aligned. And it is by his word, amen, by his grace. And that he's the one who is guiding us all and we're like gathering in the name of the Lord and we're in all different parts of the world, okay? Realize that we are all one in Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, so this is what I wanted to point out, okay? So here in Mark, he he's, he's talking about John, okay? He's talking about John, but first off he mentions Jesus Christ and where John, he came first and he was proclaiming and making, you know, preparing certain things that he had to do. But he also acknowledged and expressed that he wasn't the true light, that Jesus Christ is. And that there is someone more mightier and greater than him that will come after him. Okay, and he was talking about Jesus. Okay, like we're here in verse 8, he says, I indeed have baptized you with water. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And he's talking about Jesus, okay? Jesus, amen. Jesus is the one who baptizes you with his Holy Spirit, amen. Okay. And also, when um, this is what I wanted to point out, where it says in verse 6 that John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of his skin about his loins and he did eat locusts and honey so it's describing john's appearance what he wore and what he ate okay nowadays you see people trying to imitate what they see when they go to church how other people may dress you know what i mean suit and tie i'm not saying dress nice when you go to church i'm not trying to say that but there are people who cannot afford nice clothes and stuff and they might not you know feel comfortable showing up with what they have and the thing is i'm not saying dim your light or dress down so other people feel, can feel comfortable what i'm saying is that you know like if you were in their position and you really didn't have anything nice to wear you would you you can understand like where this person is um where their heart is and where their head is, yeah? And then you can, like, if you notice when you're out in the bar and you notice someone when you're at church or whatever and they kind of want to, like, go in but maybe hesitant and stuff, it's always good to be inviting, you know what I mean? You go and you reach out, amen, and you pray for them. And you always, you know, you rest, you, um, you ensure them that, you know, Jesus sees you for truly who you are regardless of what you wear and what you put on so nowadays you have people who like to carbon copy and dress the part you know they dress, dress the part to look a certain way well i wonder if this very same people if they would um copy john and be wearing camel's hair and um eating locusts and honey okay this is very important he made it clear that he is not the one that we are to follow. He said that the true light, which is Jesus Christ, he is the one who will come after him. So John baptized them with water, but Jesus baptized them with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And only Jesus could do that. Okay? 
seem like Jesus is the only one who can lead you and guide you to and through truth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. Okay. And that was verse 10. Okay, so there were witnesses, amen, witnessing all of these wonderful things, amen, going on at that time. Those who were walking side by side with Jesus, okay. So in Mark, it talks about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the true north, okay. Like a compass is magnetic, right? The needle is magnetic. Help you find the true north, Jesus Christ. He's the one who's going to lead you to and through truth. Okay, what else over here that we to talk about? And then Jesus also called, right? He called them Simon and Andrew in verse 17 and he says, It is written, Come ye after me and I will make you become fishers of men. Okay. And what he meant by that, that he's going to make them fishers of men. That they will be preaching, amen, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in verse 14 it says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, it is written, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So we should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ like how you see here in Mark. Amen. Okay. Sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Also proclaiming, right, that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. That we must be calling them to repentance. Amen. Jesus is calling them to repentance. Jesus is calling you to follow him because he is the only one who can lead you and guide you to and through truth amen okay he's the only one who can lead you through okay let's go into ephesians ephesians 2 chapter 8 and 9 i mean verse 8 and 9 forgive me it reads for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay. So, for it is by grace. Okay, it states that very plainly. It is by grace that you are saved through faith. Through faith in who? In Christ Jesus. Not of yourself. It's not of what you can do. It's everything of what God has already done for you and in you and through you. Amen. Okay, and in verse 10 it says, it reads, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. Okay. Put your faith and your trust in God, oh Hannah. Don't worry about and think like, oh my gosh, like how am I going to do this? Like I have no idea how to do that. Okay, it's not about what you know, okay not about what you know carnally okay no you give your heart you surrender that over to Jesus he's the one who renews your mind he's the one's going to lead you through it amen we got to be patient seek him diligently amen pray continue to pray and get into God's word for yourselves amen study get to know get to know for yourself work on your personal salvation with the Lord Jesus okay so, so he showed me the compass and then also bright morning star. So bright morning star. Then I got Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 and also Revelation 22 verse 16. But we're going into Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 and it reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? Verse 13, it reads, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. 
Verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Verse 16, it reads, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Verse 17, it reads, Now made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. Verse 18, it reads, All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. Verse 19, it reads, but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under foot under feet. Verse twenty it reads, Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned 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 forgive me <laughs> verse 21 it reads prepare a slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities verse 22 it reads for i will rise up against them said the lord of hosts and cut off from babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew said the lord Verse 23 it reads, I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the vessel of destruction, said the Lord of hosts. Verse 24 it reads, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have taught, so shall it come to pass, and I have purpose, so shall it stand. Verse 25 it reads, That I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains, tread him underfoot, then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. Verse 26, This is the purpose that is proposed upon the whole earth, and this is the ham that is stretched out upon all nations. Verse 27, For the Lord of hosts hath purpose, and who shall discern it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Verse 28, it reads, In the year that king... Uh, died was this burden verse 29 it reads rejoice not thou co palestina because the rod of him that smote thee is broken for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cactus and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent serpent verse 30 it reads and the firstborn of the poor shall feed and the needy shall lie down in safety and i will kill thy root with famine and he shall slay thy remnant verse 31 it reads howl o gate cry o city thou who palestina are dissolved for there shall come from the north a smoke and none shall be alone in his appointed times verse 32 what shall one then answer the messenger of the nations that the Lord had found in Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. Okay. Okay, that was Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 32. So why did Lucifer basically got cut down and thrown down to the ground? Why was he cut down? He was cut down because he was trying to exalt himself above God, okay? So this right here is um, not just something for you to know, but like, um, is all of God's word is not only, it's not just a story of what had happened, but it's also a warning, okay? A warning, God's word leads you, directs you, leads you to the true north, leads you to truth. It also warns you what to look out for and what to, what not to do, what to do and what not to do, okay? So, of course, Lucifer is not an example you would like to follow, but we can learn from his mistakes, right? So, therefore, already it says over here that he was cut down to the ground, okay? Why? Because he said in his heart, okay, he said this in his heart, and who searches your heart? Who can know your heart? And that is only Jesus, okay? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights 
of the clouds and I will be like the most high. Okay. That is why he got he got cast down. That is why he was thrown down. Okay. And the very hand that had cast him down is the very hand that is stretched out upon all nations. So therefore, very much today, okay, there's a lot of people who are actually doing this right now. They're saying this in their heart today, that I will ascend into heaven, I will be exalted, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. But how they saying it, they saying it with in a worldly sense okay when they put their money first when they put their title first when they put themselves first okay they're putting themselves first and they're telling themselves in their heart that they are like god today there are people who believe that they are almighty and powerful just like god okay if not some of the, most people who believe that god doesn't even exist okay are doing this and not knowing what whose hand whose hand was um Lucifer, who who stretch, whose hand is stretched among all nations, okay, over everyone, whether you believe in God or not, He is who He is, Amen. I am who I am. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He's the only one who can lead you and guide you to and through truth in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so there are people today who are doing these things. We want to learn. From all these examples and not make the same mistakes okay and not fall. the only one that we should be following is Jesus okay he's the, the living true example he's the truth life and the way amen Revelations. so we're gonna get into Revelations okay Revelations chapter 22 verse 16 and it is written I, Jesus, have sent my angels, oh, it is written, yes. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star amen amen and since we're here i'm gonna go and read on verse 17 and it reads and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely amen jesus offer you freely okay it's a free gift hallelujah free gift to receive in Jesus name okay, well, now we're going into Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 and it is written but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you okay guys all these things should be added unto you we gotta put God first continue to pursue and put God first Okay, we don't want to be exalting ourselves above God or above anybody, okay? It's not only exalting yourself above God. It's about exalting yourself above anybody, okay? No, 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 no. We're not to exalt ourselves above anybody, okay? Just because the Lord has put you in position to, to lead or be an example for a group of people or for your family or for your pork or whatever God got you, um, sharing and sowing seeds or being a living example because everywhere we go you know what I mean we are the church hallelujah okay the thing is not to get so big-headed and think that oh yeah because you know I pray and I'm saved so I better than everybody else no that's not the truth and definitely not the fact you know look at look at um, the adversary look at Lucifer right he exalted himself above God and he thought he he knew, you know what I mean, that he knew better. He wanted to be better. He put himself in a position. He exalted himself above God in his heart. And that's what happened. 
So in today, what lesson we can learn from what has happened back then and what it said in in um, in Mark, what was it Mark? Anyways, when the adversary exalts himself, we too as well shouldn't exalt ourselves, not only above God, but above anybody. When the Lord puts you in a position to you in charge all of your congregation, it doesn't mean that he left it left these people in your care for you to boss them around or give them your perspective of how they should walk or look as a Christian but you preach the good news of Jesus Christ more of you Jesus and less of me how are we going to make the our ministry foolproof with Jesus as the root amen with Jesus as the foundation if the pastor will make himself to be the foundation Therefore, that house is already divided amongst itself. Amen. Okay? God has to be the one who's leading you. The Holy Spirit, the one that's going to lead you to and through truth. Okay? Man, you, might, you cannot put your faith and your trust in man. No, we are to put our faith and our trust in God. Jesus already has done it for you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Do not fall away to false doctrines. Because, you know, I'm telling you people, we, we need the Lord's understanding. We need His discernment. We need Him to lead us and guide us to and through truth, okay? Always fix your eyes on Jesus. Pray about everything. Be patient, okay? And rely on what the Lord has said and spoken to you. You get into His Word to know what is truth, amen? Okay? So we're going to go into John chapter 14, verse 6. And it is written, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? Through Jesus, not your pastor. Through Jesus, not from all these gurus or teachers or those people who speak of abundance on how to live an abundant life i'm gonna tell you to live an abundant you really want an abundant life if you truly have an abundant life then you know that storing up your treasures in heaven is where it's at and not here on earth okay praise god continue to elevate your ears to the word of god oh hold on okay ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 I, I also um, encourage you not only to just read, go over what I'm sharing with you, but to get in there a little bit deeper as well, yeah? I'm just sharing with you what the Lord has um, blessed me to show to you, um, share with you guys, okay? What the Lord has shown me. And it is only by grace, yeah? Amen. It's only by grace. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For it reads, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves it is the gift of god amen okay we gotta remember that that it is the gift of god and i already read this i just realized that okay for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast okay <sighs> that is so good it's so important to get into the word of god and to pray and to really seek the lord diligently um be very mindful okay be very mindful because there are people out there who are really abusing the power that the lord that what the lord what what little with what little god has blessed you ordained you to take part of or overlook know that everything that you do and what is in your heart god can see all god can see all of that okay so i want to i want to encourage you for those who maybe you may be dealing with someone who may be manipulating you and putting you down by talking about your faith and the way you walk in your life okay everyone falls short but the thing is yeah 
don't look so closely on how you walk and what you've already done. Repent, turn your life around, surrender it to Jesus, and keep pushing forward and don't look back. Because the second you look back, you can, of course, you're going to see the adversary pointing the finger at you and be like, where do you think you're going? You're not worthy. Where do you think you're going? Nobody loved you. Where do you think you're going? You're, you're condemned. No, Jesus has saved you, right? You know Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Amen. So what I'm saying is continue to turn away from sin and continue to pursue and seek the Lord diligently each and every single day. Give praises and pray. Continue to commune with the Lord. It's a unity, a relationship, not about religion. It's not about what you know. It's all about what Jesus Christ has already done for you. Okay, he doesn't expect you to understand everything because if he really truly wanted you to understand everything all oh, wham bam one time, then it would be okay. Same like there's some stuff God is going to reveal to you and show you, and you're going to be like, Okay, Lord, I have this peace, but I don't understand. He's showing you something right now, but it's not something for you to fully understand just yet. You know, He's preparing you for that. So, whenever God shows you something you don't quite understand, we also got to pray and ask the Lord if this is from Him. You know what I mean? Don't always assume that everything that appears in your life is from God. We got to pray and ask the Lord for understanding, ask Him for discernment, guidance, and protection. And when you get into God's Word, it's going to be very clear if it's from God or not. You're not going to even have to ask when you're really going to know. You know what I mean? But pray and pray and pray about everything. Okay? Never mind what people think, never mind what people are saying. For they do not know what they do, okay? Because I'm telling you, people are so superficial. Everybody is judging one another, looking, oh, look at her, look at him, look how they live, look this, look that. But they don't pay attention to what they're doing in their own life. And the reason why it's so easy for your eyes, you know, wander that way and gaze and judge what other people are doing is because it hurts to actually look at yourself and start doing the work that needs to be done. And in only through Christ Jesus, you are able to do this. You try to do stuff on your own. Try and see how hard and longer. And you may not even ever get close to what the Lord can do with you in five minutes when you're just praying. Feel that lift, that weight lifted off of your shoulders. You know what I mean? Your faith and your trust in God and not in yourselves or what you can do. But it is by grace through faith in Christ Jesus that you are saved. Hallelujah. All right, I pray and hope that this message has nourished and rotted your root, that I've, I've <laughs> honored the Lord with what he has shown me the other day. Okay, guys, like, I don't know everything. I go to God, I get into his word, and I encourage you to do the same, okay? Continue to pray. The Lord is the one who's going to lead you, amen? Amen. God bless you and your ohana in Jesus' name, amen and aloha.